It was that, that guy who does the Dos Equis commercials, you know? Oh, yeah. Most interesting man. Most interesting man. I usually end up a little salty. I think I'm on like the salty end of the spectrum a little bit. All right, let's make some bread. Hey friends, it's Martin. I'm in the studio today and we're doing the first in a series of videos that are gonna focus on bread and pastry skills for everybody out there. We're putting a lot of energy into the YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe and like and join us for the video today, which is Pan de Cristal. So, pan de cristal is, is like the ultimate expression of crispy, open crumbed bread. It's like ciabatta, but amplified in all the ways that are delicious. So, basically what we're gonna do is, through the sort of superhero power of bread flour, we're gonna use equal parts by weight flour and water. So it's a super high hydration bread. And the reason that that is good is that it allows us to have a very open structure, which we couldn't do with all-purpose flour as an example. We'd need to drop the hydration a little bit. So, through the magic of bread flour, we're gonna make a bread which is incredibly open, incredibly crisp, and one of my favorite things. Should come out pretty easily. Okay, so I haven't measured any ingredients because I want you to see how simple this is to scale right on top of my scale here. So it's 500 grams of bread flour, and I'm gonna put it straight in the bowl. My water today, you know, you wanna seasonally adjust the temperature of your water. There's a note down in the baker's notes that'll give you some guidance in terms of what temperature water you should use. So 10 grams of salt. If you're using volumetric or you want to use uh, teaspoons and cup measures, um, those amounts are also down in the body of the formula, so check that out. Because there's such a small quantity of yeast, I'm using the volumetric measure. That may not make sense, but scales can be variably accurate with small amounts, so I'm switching over to this volumetric measure. It's three quarters of a teaspoon because I really want to make sure I get that right. So I've got a half and then about a quarter. Flour, water, salt, yeast in the bowl, and just stir to combine. You know, this is one of those doughs where you start mixing it and you say, oh no, I've made a mistake. Like, can this possibly be something that's gonna become workable? And I'll just tell you, yes, through the magic of bread flour, this is going to form a cohesive dough. And that's pretty much it. That's the mix. When I was looking around in the kitchen for something to let this dough rise in, and we're not gonna bake in here, but this is just for the sort of bulk fermentation period of the dough. I wanted a container that had a shape that I could dump out and it would be sort of square or slightly rectangular, either were fine. Um, and we have these casserole dishes at my house, which were very handy. If you don't have those, you could use an eight inch or a nine inch square, um, like brownie pan or something like that. I'm gonna put some olive oil in here it's like 15 grams. I mean, we wrote 15 grams just to give you a measurement. It's just a well-oiled dish. Basically, this is gonna keep the dough from sticking a little bit as we do this series of folds during bulk fermentation. So, I just take the oil, which is a fair amount of oil, and putting some on the sides. You don't have to be too sort of detailed with that. Just get the oil in there and sort of spread it around. And then I'm just gonna pour the dough. And it seems crazy, but this is gonna become something that's totally manageable by the end of bulk fermentation through the powers of time and folds and this good bread flour. It's gonna become actually a pretty manageable dough, even though right now it looks like, you know, we're gonna make pancakes or something. So we're gonna let this rest for 20 minutes and then we'll do our first fold. When I was working on this recipe, I would get a little bit nervous at this stage, and I would say, oh my gosh, no one's going to be able to make this dough, or everybody's going to hate me because I've made this terrible dough. But trust me that it will come around. Um, so, covered, 20-minute timer, uh, and then come back. The hardest thing about bread is that is understanding the ways which 
accuracy and measurement and guiding environmental controls sort of come together, right? So first and foremost, start with quality ingredients, accurately measured, well fermented. That's the way you do it. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes and now we're gonna do our first bowl fold. We're calling it a bowl fold even though it's in this you know, casserole dish, but the idea is the same as a bowl fold where I'm sort of pulling from the outside and folding into the middle. Wet your hands and the dough won't stick as badly. And you're gonna see that even though this is still really sloppy, it's, it's starting to get some structure. It's not a lot, but there's a little bit. So I'm just working my way around the outside of the dough folding it into the middle until it feels like it has some amount of strength. And you can see that by the end I can kind of pick it up. And we're going to cover it and give it another 20 minutes. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes since we did the bowl fold and now we're ready to do our first coil fold. The coil fold is nice because it really allows the dough to sort of elongate and wrap onto itself. So let me show you what I mean by that. And when I do this, you're going to see how the dough is starting to develop, how we're gaining some strength and elasticity. It's, it's pretty amazing, again, through the power of bread flour. So I go in the sides, sort of at the waist of the dough, and I'm just going to lift it and stretch it and fold it down. And I'll lift it and stretch it. And you can see the strength that's coming together with that. That's it. That's my first coil. And you can see we've got a dough which is manageable. It doesn't stick to my hand. Uh, and that's only 40 minutes into fermentation and that's a 100% hydration dough. Equal parts by weight, flour and water. If that's not incredible, I don't know. That's like one of the seven wonders of baking to me, how that happens. It's incredible. Okay, so that's 20 minutes. This is our second coil fold. And so a little bit of water on my hands. And you can see how we're starting to see some fermentation activity here. I'm starting to get some bubbles. The dough is shiny. It looks smooth to me. Um, and so going to the center here, and I'm going to pull up. And you can see, look how gorgeous. Dough looks great. So I'll pull up, stretch it, and just sort of roll it forward. I'll do one more. Just roll it forward. That's it. Silky. It's one of the best things about making this bread, honestly, beyond eating it, is just how beautiful it is and how nice and sort of luxurious it is to touch it. Okay, another 20. So the dough's had three hours of bulk fermentation. We've been folding it. We know that it's strong. Looking at it in the container, I can tell that it's active. I see some small bubbles on the surface, so now we're ready to divide. I start by flouring the top surface. I like this additional step where I am going to help this come out of the container because I'm going to dump this. But so if I flour the top surface and then just sort of I see if I can kind of release the dough from the container just a little bit, it's going to come out easier when I dump it. Okay, let's set that aside for just a second. And I'm going to dump it onto a really well floured surface, like really well floured. So I'm just going to dump it and it should come out pretty easily. And then I'm going to generously flour the top surface. I'm going for pretty much full coverage and a lot of this flour is going to be absorbed by the dough or it's just going to sort of disappear. If it feels like it's a little bit heavy, don't worry about it. Now I'm going to divide the dough into basically four pieces. It's going to be kind of like along those lines. So just with my bench knife and at this point when I'm handling the dough I'm trying not to sort of be rough with it. I'm trying to be really gentle because I have this gassy structure that's developing and I don't want to deflate that. So at this point I'm being really gentle with the dough. And when they bake they'll have a little better contrast. And that's it. They'll, they'll now rise for about two hours. 
Um, at the end of that rise, what I'm looking for is to see that there on the surface are some large bubbles are starting to form. That'll be my sort of visual cue that tells me that they're ready to go in the oven. I, I don't cover these for the proof. And that's never the case with dough. I always want to protect a dough from drying out. But with this dough that is so high hydration, it tends to work out OK. It's OK if it has a little bit of a skin on top. It actually helps to provide some structure to the dough. So I don't cover them. I mean, maybe in the dead of winter, if I really feel like it's crusting, I might put a piece of parchment over the top, because parchment just doesn't weigh anything, and it'll only sort of decrease the amount of airflow that's moving across the surface and drying it out. Um, but I just leave them uncovered at room temp. It's just like no fuss, um, and it works. So uncovered, room temperature, just hanging out. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. We can take a siesta now, or eat, 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 and then siesta. That's what I want, I vote, in that order. Yeah, I vote eat. Eat, and then siesta? Mm -hmm. OK, all right. OK, so it's been a couple hours, and these are starting to look good. They look almost inflated, which is nice. I see some larger bubbles forming on the surface. You want to wait until you see those. When you see those, you know that the inside of the loaf is starting to fill with air and really open up. So these look good. They're healthy. They're ready to go in. This is a good tool. This is like one of my favorite baking tools. Just a pan, but look, it doesn't have an edge on it. So I can put a piece of parchment on there. It's great for loading. It's like whoop. And I don't, I don't use a ton of tools, um, but that's one that I always use. I always use that thing when I'm loading bread in here. Okay, so the pan de cristal is out of the oven, and one of the first things you'll notice is how light it is. It literally weighs nothing, and that's because the inside is full of air. It's just air pockets. It's this wildly open crumb held by this crackery, eggshell-thin crust. So we want to have this real open sort of variable structure. All of this magic is afforded by this good bread flour. It's got enough strength to hold equal parts water and flour. It's a high hydration bread. It's delicious. Go get out there and bake yourself some Pan de Cristal. <laughs>